everyone. Hi, welcome to the Juno Files. I'm Jim Juno, your host, and I am talking today uh, with Kelly Conway. And this is this is a show. If you if you're watching on YouTube, please hit subscribe because we can always use the listeners. Kelly Conway is the daughter of the great Tim Conway. And welcome to the show, Kelly. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, your father, I mean, I was I grew up watching the Carol Burnett show. So I I mean, and I loved your father on that. Thank you. And, and um, but you, you know, your new book is called My Dad's Funnier Than Your Dad. And that's probably true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, so, it is. Well, I don't know. There are a lot of funny dads out there, I'm sure. Um, but it was just a playful uh, title. A couple of people didn't like it at first. They thought it was being kind of um, uh, my brother's like, it's conceited. I go, no, it's just a, it's a joke. It's, it's, yeah. it's a joke. But then now he likes it. Oh, all right. Yeah. And, and let's face it. Your dad was Tim Conway, one of the funniest people ever on TV. Yeah. So it's not conceited. It's maybe true. You know, it's probably true. It might and, be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you're biased. I can see that, you know? So. Yeah. But, but let me ask now, but growing up in the Conway household, from what, from what I've been able to read about your book and when does it come out or is it, it already comes out December, uh, December 15th? December Which 15th. is by coincidence, well, not coincidence, because I believe that there aren't really coincidences, but um, it was delayed a little bit, and they pushed the date from a date in November they had, and they just chose December 15th, but it's my dad's birthday. Well, there you go. Let's see. How, how Isn't old that would cool? You, yeah. How old would your dad have been? Um, he would have been 88. 88. So mm -hmm. so coming out on his birthday, that's a marvelous, that's a marvelous one, a Christmas present, and yeah. two, a marvelous birthday present. Yeah, so, but he he was like I said one of the funniest people ever on TV and uh, in the in what I've been able to read about your book he brought that humor home didn't he? He sure did. He um he the days he worked um you know Monday through Friday uh, Monday Tuesday and kind of Wednesday were not that uh, long days so he was around a lot those days Thursday and Fridays he was. Uh, you know, they were busy dress rehearsal on Thursday and then they shot on Friday or taped on Friday. Um, he was, he, he was with us a lot. He and my mom had different ways of bringing us up. He was a little lighter, <laughs> in, <laughs> uh, in his conversations. Um, but my mom, we drove my mom nuts. There's six of us. I have, uh, five younger brothers and there's, uh, six of us only in only eight years. So we are all kind of all at once, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, five was, brothers as a, yeah. <laughs> oh my what was that like I gotta ask you that because it was awesome I mean I don't know anything different but it was I'm so I love them so much and uh we had a blast growing up we had we had our own hockey team because we had five um I was a goalie for a long time <laughs> uh getting tennis balls shot at my head uh uh on the driveway but um we had a blast. We had, you know, everything was an event. Like you said, it was it, growing up. Wasn't just, he would come home from work and watch TV with us. We had, uh, you know, and not just swimming, he would have a swim meet or he would have uh, some kind of a theater set up in the, in the living room to watch the wizard of Oz or whatever was coming on that night. Um, he just, he made everything fun and, um, an event like a, almost a competition <laughs> <laughs> i mean it sounds like it was an extremely happy household it oh, was yeah and and you, you see so often <clears throat> excuse me you see so often uh entertainers families they especially it seems among the humorous ones that, that are on tv or in the movies their household life isn't all that happy but yours seemed like it was the exception to that rule it was and 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 I don't know how we got so lucky. My my dad's from near Cleveland, Chagrin Falls, Ohio, and my mom's from Dearborn, Michigan. And they raised us with their Midwest values. And, um, you know, everything they did was kind of the way they were raised. So we just, we had fun. And there, like I said, there were so many of us. Um, you know, if my parents were busy, then we'd have fun on our own. But um He's the exception to that because 
I, I know what you're saying. There's, there's just so mm-hmm. many horrible stories out there, but we got really lucky. Yeah, I can, I can see that. And, but I was reading like in the, on the, on the, the book flap. That's what I was, that's what I was sent. Okay. Your father built a go-kart, uh, a go-kart racetrack in his back, in their, in your backyard. He did. Well, we had this, we had it at our house and then the driveway kind of was winding, wound around the side and to the back and with this big courtyard and he would set up, like I said, everything's a competition. So we wouldn't just ride around on a mini bike or a go-kart. He would time it and there was an obstacle course and there were jumps and uh, puddles and lakes and <laughs> weeds and whatever he could think of to go through. Um, so there were a few uh, emergency room trips, but no, <laughs> nobody died. That's what I was going to ask you. Was there any broken bones involved? Oh, yeah. They, <laughs> they, knew, they knew us by name at Encino Emergency. So. Oh, my gosh. Like... Like, Conways are here. Who is it? Corey. <laughs> <laughs> or who is it this time? <laughs> yeah, it was it this time. He was here last week. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, now your dad, he... Uh, <clears throat> from i'll be honest with you from the, from the carol Burnett show on up to spongebob squarepants i used to, i used to watch one and and i that includes the dwarf videos that includes him with harvey corman but let me talk a little bit about his career um he was on the steve allen show did he and and got his uh tv break um in mikhail's navy i believe he did um rosemary uh, who happened to be in Cleveland when he, she saw my dad and Ernie Anderson, um, his best friend. And um, she told Steve Allen how funny they were. And Steve Allen brought both of them out uh, to LA. And soon after that, he got um, McKill's Navy. And that was in 1962. And I was born in 62. So I, I was born and he started the show all in the same week that summer. So Oh my gosh. So that's yeah. so basic. You came in with you came in with the success then. I did. <laughs> I did. Look, after after uh, Michaela's Navy though, he went on to uh and he had I I don't remember this show. Forgive me, the Tim Conway show. I probably saw it at some point when I was a child. Yeah. I just don't I don't remember it. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, there were a lot of them. There were I think there were three or four um Mm -hmm. they didn't last very long uh they usually told him to uh shut it down about episode three out of 12 (laughs) um so um it was a variety show and he had um uh, dance uh you know like carol burnett had uh the dancers on her show because they would do kind of a spin-off on uh a musical or something every week Um, my dad had dancers too but they were all little kid dancers they were all about 10 12 13 years old um so that was kind of fun it was a, it was a variety show and you know guests and kind of you know like a carol burnett show format um but did he bring any of the guests home did you meet or because you you've been around the show business every, your whole life now um yeah. did he bring any of the guests home or did he take you to uh, to the i guess television city is where they had it, it is where they had it we, um, at our house, I mean, usually every weekend we had this big pool cabana, pool house outside and um, Harvey Corman and his kids came over a lot and the Andersons, Ernie Anderson and his kids who we we're close with um, and Carol and her girls. And yeah, it was just, it, and it wasn't a celebrity fest at all. It was just his friends, you know, and um Again, he wouldn't just invite people over for a hot dog and a beer. He would have like a, a pool volleyball game set up for the grown-ups, and then the kids would be on the high dive trying to compete for the biggest splash or something. So, and he'd make a trophy out of uh, a swim mask and cover it in foil and and nail it to a, a piece of wood or something. So there's always a trophy. <laughs> um, and yeah, we got to go to CBS also. Yeah, I was gonna say now now at CBS he. He began on the, or not began on it, but he, he landed on the uh, Carol Burnett show. Yeah. And that is, that is when I started watching him. And the old man was, was my favorite character. Did you have a favorite character of yours? I think, I think that is too. I like Mr. Tudball too. Um, oh. And 
Mr. Tadball. That's, um, I love that one too. I like yeah. all of them. He's, he was just funny and he was like that at home. So we got did to he, go. Did he ad lib a lot? He did. <laughs> um they liked it and they hated it <laughs> because <laughs> they uh he would try to keep it a secret um the stories he told me he would try to keep it a secret uh until they taped the show on fridays so often they would um not be ready for what he was going to do with angles or camera or timing but um that's what made it so fun and funny i think you know i mean they let him do what he wanted to do and and that's why it was so good Yes, exactly. And there's one famous blooper with the elephant story. Not uh, and that, that was, that. yeah, no, isn't it great? I mean, that's I mean, one like, of my favorites. And I, we can't repeat the language that uh, that uh, Vicki Lawrence used, but well, <laughs> exactly. But it really, your dad loved to, your dad loved to make people laugh, make people crack up, and he seemed to love getting cracked up too, didn't he? He did. He wouldn't do it often, but when he did, he couldn't stop. Like at once, if somebody did catch him off guard, um, uh, then it was kind of over for the night. Um, but they had a blast. He he said so many times that that it was the best time he's ever had in his life. Like he's it was it was a pleasure to go to work and a blast to work there. And um, sad when it ended, but he you know understood Carol's reasoning to stop, and maybe that's why. It's so still so well loved today is that you know she finished when it was still great yes. and um and it still holds up i watch so lucky that we have youtube and and stuff to watch them on. i get i could watch them every day if i wanted to you know? that's true that is true yeah so and um he was now was harry corman his best friend because they seemed to just click together they did yes they were best pals and partners and uh they toured uh, later on, like in my dad's seventies, he toured with Harvey all around the country. Um, gosh, that was like for, uh, in the 2000s, I guess. Um, yeah, they do nightclub acts all over, uh, you know, big casinos and venues all over the place. So we had a blast and I go with them all the time. So it was a really fun, they would do sometimes two or three uh, gigs per weekend so we'd fly around and have a blast now here now my grandchildren know your know of your father yeah from spongebob squarepants isn't that great the Barnacle kids Boy. know him and and grandparents know him and everyone knows him exactly and you know and it, it didn't dawn on me when i when i was watching the show with my grandkids by the way anyway so <laughs> sometimes they were in the room sometimes they weren't but uh, <laughs> i did not realize at the time that it was a reuniting of um of um oh michael ernest, navy. Borgnine. ernest borgnine and yeah, him from michael's navy yeah is that great yeah how did that come about him landing that role you know, I don't even know if there's a story or was, or I guess they asked them and they both said yes. And, um, you know, my dad, my dad's legacy is one that he, he made sure he did everything clean so he could watch with his grandkids mm -hmm. and little kids all over the country or the world can, can watch and not have to be, and parents not have to turn it off for language or, you know, a foul joke or something. Um, everything was clean and fun and, you know, cartoon anyway. So. Yeah. That led, that was leading me on to my next question. Your dad never worked blue. I mean, it was always clean. Yeah. 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 And he yeah. always said, and he, he, he had been offered a couple of things I think a Quentin Tarantino movie, you know, before a couple years before he passed away, mm -hmm. and um, he, not that I don't know, I don't know what was in it, and I didn't see it, and I don't know what, if there was any language in it, but he, like he, I said, he wanted to to be able to be watched by little kids and grandparents and not be embarrassed or questioned about who was in the room. Um, so he just thought that was a little too adult, you know. Was that Natural Born Killers? Is that what you're the movie? No, it was. Oh, it, I don't remember the title. It was a couple years before he passed away. Oh, okay. It was about 2016 or 17, maybe. Oh, so one of his newer films. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I was thinking. I was thinking that you know with um, 
not not um a Rodney Dangerfield was in Natural Born Killers, which I thought was a strange oh wow a strange casting choice. But yeah. no, that that's why I was thinking maybe they offered that to your dad before before a, a Dangerfield. I don't know. Um, I think it was it was more recent than that. It was passed away mm-hmm. in 2019. It was a couple of years before that. Now you yourself though you've got you had a career of your own and your dad taught you how to be a I want to say I don't want to say a hard-nosed businessman but a businesswoman (laughs) but but you learned to take care of yourself through your dad's um career didn't you did I um I didn't have an interest in going into acting or anything like that but um I liked all of the behind the scenes um costume and wardrobe stuff and being able to visit uh, CBS when we were kids, I got to sneak over to the costume department and hair and makeup and uh, look at all that. So I loved it and went into costume design. Um, yeah, how, had, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I had I had the best uh, upbringing. Like it wasn't training because I was a kid, but I got to see it all and see how it worked and be what can be done and how fun it was. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, and it's and it's been fantastic. I mean, you uh, you are one of the leading, I want to say, costume designers now. You're in Los Angeles, I assume. Right? I'm in LA, um, LA, and I do a lot of commercials. Um, we might go on strike on Monday, from what I'm reading. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening with it, but the all of the IATSE unions are going on strike, so oh, I no. may. <laughs> I might come back and talk to you on Monday. Hey, no problem. <laughs> I might be with you all week. <laughs> I say that that's wonderful. I'll, I'll pencil you in, okay? <laughs> Thanks. But um, now, now you also talk about. Let's get a little bit serious here, not to bring the show down. But there was also, even though there was many laughs and highs and stuff, there were still a couple of lows, um, especially there were a couple lows. Hmm? um yeah the the divorce wasn't um a picnic yeah uh but we got through that and uh actually when once you once you realize that your parents are happier and uh you know nicer to each other when they separate a little bit um it's not bad once you once you think of them outside of just being your parents and that they have uh other parts of their lives not just us kids and each other that it's you know, finally, when I clued into that, it took a while, but um, when I was stopped being mad about them breaking up, it was pretty, it was great. And um, my dad married a woman named Charlene uh, Beatty, who was Carol Burnett's secretary um, for you forever, for gosh, mm-hmm. over 20 years before in New York when she started there. And um, through the, sh- my dad was still working on the show and through all that, he uh, knew Charlene and they married. And she was my stepmom for 30, over 30 years. And we had a great relationship. It was awesome. And she was funny and she loved my dad so much. Um, But something happened where, I don't know, it all went haywire. And when my dad got sick, he, uh, Charlene, for some reason, didn't want me visiting him. She cut off all my visitation and I had to go to court and it was a big deal. That was by far the hardest thing uh, I've ever had to um, not go through because I wasn't going through it. My dad was, I just Mm -hmm. wanted to keep him safe and sound. And I wanted, I thought it'd be nice if he were at home, if he wasn't doing well, you know, what that's, that's the first choice and they could afford to do it. And I'm not sure, you know, so it was, she didn't want me meddling in his healthcare and uh, it turned into really bad and we had to go to court. And so it ended bad. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's sad. It's it's sad. It's sad for her. It's sad when your best friend is going to leave. And it's sad for me because my dad, but my dad is parents are more of a natural progression in life. And although I'm sad every day, I would love for him to be here. I not during, not during the last year and a half, he wouldn't have liked all this, but, mm-hmm. um, but um, you know, it's a different thing than when a spouse leaves. And I, and I can see why she was uh, panicking or whatever, but it's, she knew how close my dad and I were. We were, we were pal, best pals. So it was, that was a tough one. I was going to ask you, how was it hard to write about that period? Because, or was it a cathartic experience? It was, it wasn't hard. It was kind of, I mean, 
because I'm not a writer, uh, the whole year we were writing was hard <laughs> um, because I can tell a great story. I can tell a story to a whole room full of people, but I'm not a writer. And Caroline St. Clair, who wrote with me, um, who I got hooked up with uh, in the beginning of all this about a year and a half ago, um, she's an amazing writer. And she took my stories and my words and turned them into readable uh sentences because I'm not exactly hooked on phonics like she is. <laughs> but um it was it was I don't think um a therapist in the country could have done for me what it was to tell that story and to get it out and not that I wanted I don't want anything bad to be remembered about my dad and and it wasn't really it wasn't him he was he was the um almost bystander to it you know it was it was Charlene and I and I just I still don't understand I still don't have an answer of why she did it um but maybe she panicked and I don't know I wouldn't have acted that way but who knows well I tell you what I mean I'm, the book I'm looking forward to I really am looking forward to the book because Thanks. I just want to find out I want to find out more about him and and in this day, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, voice is going through puberty here. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. want some coffee? <laughs> coffee, I need some coffee. Yes, indeed. Um, <clears throat> but the thing is, is that nowadays with the internet, I know you said your dad may not may not like it, but people are finding stuff, finding things all the time. Has there been any? Yeah. Has there been any new videos that you've seen or or audio? Oh my gosh. Yeah, people send me stuff all the time, and I'm thinking. I have never seen that. How can I have never have not seen that? Um, oh, really? Yeah, people dig deep and they send they send me things all the time. I love it. And I send it to my brothers and, you know, a couple of brothers will go like, yeah, I kind of remember that. Um, but like I said, we were all little and kind of remember the same eight years for, you know, eight years between us. So um, there's stuff out there that, I, that I've never seen, which is <laughs> so fun. I'm like, but I wish... I could have seen it when he was here and going, what, what was that? What is it from? But kind of research it and see what, what it was, well, what commercial was. But that's cool. That's great. And that's fantastic. And yeah. well, I tell you what, Kelly, I've, I've appreciated it. I've had fun talking to you and, Thank you know, you if you're on, me. oh, no problem. And if you're on strike, come, please come back. Just send me an email or whatever, you know, and I'm uh, gonna come back and sit right there. Right. <laughs> you like my chalkboard? This is, this is really high tech, you know, <laughs> I like that. I write everything down. I have a book that I write. I eventually transfer it to my computer, but I write it all down like that because it helps me remember everything. <laughs> this is like the, every month. Uh, this is October right now. I love so. it. You can see my book. It's, it looks the same. I, <laughs> I have to write it down. It makes me remember it. And then I can, I can get to it easily. And, and it's no misunderstanding, you know? And my daughter always kids me. She says that, you know, you're such a geek, a high tech geek. And then you've got a chalkboard that you, that you rely upon, you know? So I love the balance. You have to have the balance. Exactly. Well, Again, it's been great having you, Kelly. Kelly Thanks, Conway. Tino. Thank you. Oh, no problem. The book is called My Dad's Funnier Than Your Dad. And it tells about growing up, being in the Tim Conway household, coming out December 12th, right? 15th. 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 15th December 15th. And you can pre-order on Amazon or really wherever books are sold. Target, Amazon, uh, anywhere they sell books. Great. Fantastic. Well, thanks again for being here. Thank you. I'll talk to you again.